Bible prophecy warns of a flesh man coming on the scene with supernatural powers that he got from the devil. Well, he will use these supernatural powers to do miracles in the sight of men, and these miracles he will use to fool the entire world into thinking that he's God or Jesus Christ or try to replace Christ. We'll tell you about the mark of the beast and the Antichrist real quick. The Antichrist is going to be somebody that's going to be a hundred times worse than Hitler. But when he starts out, he's going to be a beautiful speaker, uh, mesmerizing in appearance, and a man of peace. That's how he's going to present himself. And he's going to unite all the world's religions under him. And he's going to pretty much form a religious dictatorship that will kill anybody that doesn't bow down to him. First on his list will be to kill Christians, to take the place of Jesus Christ and to claim that he's God. He's going to sit in the temple over in Jerusalem and pretend to be God. Well, his system is going to be financial, economic, and all that, and you won't be you won't be able to be a part of that system unless you take an oath to him and reject all your former faiths like Christianity and whatever else you believed in. And if you ain't willing to do that, they'll threaten your family and threaten your kids and threaten your mom to kill them first in front of you and then kill you. But if you're a Christian, you know that you got to stick with Christ no matter what, even if it means death, because Christ died for us. He gave us his all, you know, just so we can have a chance to live with him in heaven. So this uh, Mark of the Beast and Antichrist, it has teeth behind it because in 1991, these laws were introduced to the U.S. from the Sanhedrin called the Noahide Laws, and it's seven of them. But as you go deeper into these Noahide Laws, one of the tenets is... If you will not renounce Jesus Christ, the penalty is death because worshiping Jesus Christ to the Sanhedrin and the Noahide laws is considered idolatry. And so they'll murder you. These, the Sanhedrin is the same guys back in the Bible days that conspired against and murdered Jesus because they were jealous of Jesus because Jesus was like an innovator. You know, where they was all about that religion and exploiting people, but Jesus Christ came with the true faith, which was a family, family based doctrine where you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ is the Son. He's our Redeemer, He's our Healer, He's our everything. And He came to earth from heaven to show us how to do it. And the difference between Him and all these other false gods is Jesus Christ is the only God that said He wasn't too good to die for His servants. So He left His throne in heaven and came down here and died took our penalty on the cross because we were sinners and we were worthy of whatever punishment we were supposed to get by the bad things we've done but Christ said you know what father I'll take their punishment for them and if they follow me I'll I'll lead them to heaven so leave them in my hands so Christ is like our lawyer our defender our everything because Satan all he does is accuse us of all, accuse us of all the bad things we do he's like hey God look at what they're doing they're just like me so I get to take them into hell but Christ said hey if they follow me my blood is on them so they're mine and I can take them with me to heaven so that's what the deal is with Jesus Christ and this mark of the beast and Antichrist system this Antichrist figure he's gonna have supernatural powers and all that he's gonna have everything that he needs from the devil to fool mankind but just know if you're a Christian you can't go along with him just to save your life or to eat or anything like that because if you do God will reject you and you won't be able to go to heaven so you have to hold on no matter how hard it gets so it's letting everybody know about the Antichrist and the beast system alright guys make the right choice God bless you and I love you going to read from the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of David he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth I know thy works behold I have set before thee an open door and no man can shed it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept 
the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, I'm reading from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and this relates to the Antichrist topic. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceitful and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Wherefore, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. And go back and regroup. Sitting alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon as it is Cowboy football to begin quarter number two, as we'll see one following the score on the final play before break. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you got to make sure you nurse him through and say, okay, don't worry about it. When we need you, you got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it... He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Brown. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. 
an interception, but on the field, the guys who are picking it off, they're not saying that. What word are they using? It's Oski. <laughs> what? And that means catch the ball and go the other way. That's your vernacular. I've never heard anybody say Oski. Ask around. They'll tell you. The defense more than did its job. Now the offense is summoned onto the field as he'll go for two. They're going to try and run. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. I know they didn't tack on the two points, but I liked their attempt. After the interception return for a touchdown, I was thinking to myself, forget kicking it, go for two, and they did. Well, yeah, and everybody's scrambling. Maybe you catch the defense on their heels. They weren't ready to be out there. Yeah, it's almost like a sudden change, right? There's a turnover. You take it away. They stuck it in the end zone. Keep the momentum going. Give credit to the defensive guys for rallying and stopping that two-point attempt. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 24. Now Carr to try again after the pick six. And this one complete to Seth Roberts. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards on the play. Throwing on first down is Carr. Eluding the pressure right. And he slides to avoid the hit. Give him 12 yards that time and an Oakland first down. The last drive, remember, similar situation. He forced a ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. That makes it. And he will go down. A cowboy sack. David Irving. Getting in there from his defensive tackle spot to snow him under for a loss of four. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Shotgun now for Carr. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Lynch. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It'll be a gain of six, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Now Carr, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 33, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 43. Off the play fake, Prescott. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down, Jeff Swain, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Sweat, 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 sweat
On second down, Prescott again, escaping the pressure right. His throw incomplete. Amari Cooper, the intended target. And now it's third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Prescott to throw it. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. Picked off near the 42. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. Cooper was the intended target. How about the big boys snagging one? You don't see that every week. No, you don't, but a lot of them are just reliving their old dreams, going back to when they were in youth football and in high school. They didn't always play defensive line. Some of them actually handled the football, and you can see the flashback when he grabbed that one. And he's got this one across midfield into Cowboy territory. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. throw on second down and a little floater there is incomplete Anthony Brown right there to knock it away defensively Charles they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes yeah you're exactly right they've been assignment sound staying in their lanes keeping proper leverage and communicating well too From the gun now on third down, Carr, it's caught, Nelson, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. They go play action here on first down. He'll buy some time, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. Now Carr throwing on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. The Raiders on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 17. From the gun, it's Carr. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Back in the first quarter, you said it. They need to avoid the big play, but he just got a big one right there. You can't relax. You know, we talked about it in the first quarter, but as the game progresses, still opportunities, and he took advantage of one there. They set up the screen to Lynch. And all the way down inside the five to the four. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. They'll run with Lynch. And he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. Marshawn Lynch taking it in from four yards out, and the Raiders have cut it back to within a score. So now Carr, he'll lead the Raiders up to go for two. Here's Carr. And this one is caught. So they come up with a two-point conversion, and that makes this a one-point game now. Carlson now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. 
The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. On the crossing route, he hits his man, Amari Cooper. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 23 yards on the play. A big hitter to start the drive. Has him up near midfield here for first and 10. A first down carry for Smith. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Play fake. Here's Prescott. Buying time to his left. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call. As the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Sets up a first and goal. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Four down, four down. Two go 46, 46. Two go 46. Okay, we gotta get the stop here, Nate. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. On the move to his left. And he will score! Touchdown, Cowboys! Dak Prescott in the final seconds of the first half. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. And now Jason Garrett electing for his guys to try for two. Now a toss coming right side. That's Jackson. And he is into the end zone. So they get two more on the board here just before halftime. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. 
The final shot here before half for Carr. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. Cheetah Bay Awuzie there to make the play in coverage. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. And now a timeout defensively after that first down play. So they're going to make this offense sweat out half number one. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. So we have come to halftime here in Dallas with the Cowboys out in front as we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out comes the Raiders' offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them guys we're right there just not playing as well as we need to let's pick it up and we still have a chance to win this game yeah they do we'll see if they can pick it up third quarter starts with a run from Lynch and they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing his car on third down. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off right around the 43. And his guys are going to take over. AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Obviously, they do everything big here in Dallas. And the introduction of the Cowboys, no exception. They're set for football in Big D as their guys will do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. the 30 to the 32. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Here's Goff now on second down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. First down, L.A. Goff finding Higby. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes 
You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 41. A shotgun snap for Goff. And his throw is incomplete. Try to get it to Woods, and that'll bring up second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, go, go, go. not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. Well, that second down run, a big help. The seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now. Well, that's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running play on first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Tyrone Crawford. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Out of the gun. Gone. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Gurley again here on first down. He gets this down to the three, but no further. Brought the power run out of the bag and got a couple extra yards with it. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Super one, super one. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. Trying to barrel up in there, but I don't think he got it. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play, and that's going to lead him to fourth down. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They're running with Gurley. And this is going to be nowhere close. Needed some inches and ended up losing yardage. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this crowd loves it as their guys hold on the opening drive. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it Everybody off on first down. Everybody. Let's go. Let's finish now. Now an Eastern Michigan man, Darius Jackson on the carry. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight.
A second down throw for Prescott. Looking deep downfield. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. LaMarcus Joyner with a pick. And that interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. First down, it's Gurley. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. Well, that one was over before it could get rolling. How about the D just knifing into the backfield and shutting that one down? And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more. Looking for Cooks, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jalen Smith. And a good return here as he takes it up past the 30-yard line. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. And out now come the Cowboys. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you. A huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Prescott now on second down. And yeah, the ball is knocked out. And now the Rams have got it going the other way. They find some open field here. Breaks through the contact. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them. Big tackle, knock the ball free. Anything you can do to slow them down. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play guy a question. <laughs> hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. On second down, here's Goff. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Brandon Cooks from eight yards out. And the Rams are in for six. And he puts it through. Zerline out now to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic oath, first do no harm. And right now they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. To throw is Prescott. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. They go play action here on first down. He's going to loft this one deep left sideline. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, 
you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Throwing again, Prescott on second and 10. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Aaron Donald in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Yeah. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Third and long for Prescott. And this one is incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Dak and the offense still out there. They are going to go for it. They're indeed going for it. It's Prescott. He gets it to Brown, complete. And great yardage here all the way deep into Los Angeles territory. A minute 52 left to play in this second quarter. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. The first opportunity in the red zone for the Cowboys. They've got a first and goal from the 10-yard line. Here's Prescott. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. In for the score. And the Cowboys are an extra point away from tying the football game. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects and he's able to deliver the ball on time. And now Jason Garrett electing for his guys to try for two. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but... I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. So Dak will bring the Cowboys up to go for the two-point try. And before the snap here, we've got a timeout by the offense. It's their first of this first half, and they'll get together and talk this one over. So here now is Prescott as his guys will go for the two-point conversion. They'll let Elliott try and run it in. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Super one, super one. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 
Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Taco Charlton in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. From the gun, here's gone. Looking for Cooks and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker Jalen Smith. And he's given his guys a shot for late points as they will take over in range for a field goal or maybe more. Here's Prescott. This will be caught inside the 10. And he will reach the 8-yard line before going out. That one goes for 24 yards. It's Prescott, and this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott. That'll bring up second down. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick is indeed good. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. Two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Zerline out now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Cowboys now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without it. He's got a man complete. Pass the 20. 10. Touchdown, Cowboys. Jameis Olawale, 75 yards. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. And he wasn't blocking or running it there. They tossed it to it. And you remember the good old days when the 49ers were riding roughshod in the league? They used their fullback in pass plays all the time. Roger Craig, Tom Rathman, those guys were terrific at running these types of plays. And now Jason Garrett electing for his guys to try for two. They'll try and run it up the middle. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Defensively, certainly not fooled there. Play started at the two, and he was tackled at the two. That has to feel good for them. Not happy about having given up the touchdown, but stopping the two-point conversion gives them a little bit of a lift as they head to the bench. This will be taken in at the one. And they finally get to him, but not before he's past the 45 to the 46-yard line. It's the third quarter, and they're down on the scoreboard. And while no one wants to hit the panic button just yet, points are a necessity on this drive. What a great way to get set up. 
Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 46. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And that's complete to Cooks. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first down, it's gone. And that's caught left side. It's Woods. A gain of six there on first. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Robert Woods, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Rams are able to get back within a touchdown. Zerline good with a PAT. And the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. Prescott off play action. He'll rifle this one deep right side into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by John Johnson, and his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. I know some teams are leery about playing cover, too, because the strong safety is not usually a terrific cover guy. But in this case, he played it perfectly, read the football, and went and made the interception. So good field position for the Rams as they come up first and 10. After the interception, here's Goff. Throw complete right side to Cooks. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. It's a loss of two, now third down. Now a play fake, and it's gone. And he's going to be intercepted. 